Now on News Channel 6 at 11, Richmond County voters are given a chance at early voting this Sunday for the Senate runoff elections. Plus, small businesses were celebrated today and we hear from shop owners. And how you can prevent scammers from making your holiday cheer into a holiday fear. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 11. Good evening, everyone. I am Tiffany Hobbs. Thank you so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on. We begin with breaking news out of Washington County, where one person is dead after a stabbing. Investigators say a woman is suspected of stabbing 54-year-old Edward Porter to death after an incident in their Harrison, Georgia mobile home. Porter was allegedly involved in a reported assault on a juvenile incident prior to the stabbing. The Washington County Sheriff's Office and GBI agents are conducting a joint investigation on this case. If you have any information, you are asked to contact law enforcement. One person is dead after a fatal collision between two vehicles in Edgefield County on the intersection of SC-121 and Monument Drive. Authorities say the crash happened around 7.07 p.m. tonight. The driver of a 1997 Chevy sedan sustained fatal injuries, while the other vehicle, a 2005 Chevy SUV, had two passengers that were taken to the hospital. We will keep you updated with more information to come. In Orangeburg County, authorities are searching for a missing five-year-old. Deputies responded to the home on Louise Drive on Thanksgiving to conduct a welfare check. They found the child's mother, who had not been heard from since November 1st, dead inside. The child, Aspen Jeter, was not there. If you have any information on where she may be, please contact authorities. New details today about a fire at a Saluda County poultry facility. We told you about the incident Thursday night. The fire at Valley Proteins Incorporated in Ward, South Carolina, burned for a number of hours, but was finally extinguished late Thursday night. The company that owns the plant says about 160 people work at the facility. No injuries were reported. They don't expect any layoffs at this time. And now, let's take a look at our weather with Chief Meteorologist Tim Miller. Well, 69, our high temperature today, so we're certainly a little bit above normal for the temperature department. Started out this morning pretty much on average at about 39 degrees with plenty of sunshine today, but you did notice the clouds started to roll in, and that's been the case pretty much through uh, the early evening. Tonight, AU Health looking fine with our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam tonight. Notice the clouds starting to thicken up. Yes, that's been the case over the last several hours. High pressure to our north isn't going to help us much as these clouds really are starting to thick up and bring in the rain. The rain is well off towards our west, uh, and that's what's going to be headed our way as we get into your forecast. 57 the overnight low for tonight. Cloudy with rain developing certainly after midnight in the wee hours of the morning. We'll keep that rain chance about 40%. Tomorrow, rain and some thunderstorms. Then we're into bright sunshine and look at those temperatures into the mid 70s for your day tomorrow. So some rain early. It'll be a breezy day and then clearing skies. We'll detail the rest of your forecast. I'll show you hour by hour what to expect for tomorrow morning all coming up. Happening tomorrow, Richmond County voters will get another day to vote in the runoff. The Richmond County Board of Elections voted on Monday to expand early voting that will now begin tomorrow. This comes after a Fulton County judge ruled in a lawsuit bought by U.S. Senate candidate Raphael Warnock and other Georgia Democrats, leaving the matter up to individual counties. Richmond County is the only one in our area that will be open this weekend for early voting. Days like this is why voting is so important because each member of that Board of Elections is appointed by an elected official. And, and those folks are supposed to represent what we want as a community. And so today is a win, it's a small win. We have much more work to do going forward. All four early voting locations in Augusta will be open Sunday, November 27th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. All other Georgia counties begin early voting on Monday. Coverage you can count on continues in Augusta, where local businesses are recognized nationally at Seoul City Small Business Saturday. This initiative supports roughly a dozen downtown businesses. News Channel 6's Bria Smith has more. We have a lot of businesses down here, and you know, once you come down here, you'll see what all we have available. This day for most is one they look forward to every year. Today is like our day. 
owner of Foss clothing brand, Jawan Tolbert, says he's an Augusta native. So my brand represents Augusta. So the F fashion is something we take serious here in Augusta. Athletics uh, is very heavy here in the Augusta area and Augusta community. And that urban society comes from all the nightlife, the entertainment, to the music, to all the events that take place in the Augusta community. And at a time where the country faced an unprecedented time during the pandemic, other local business owners got creative. After I served in the Army for six years, I got out, pandemic hit, I became a mom all at once, and I needed to figure out how to pivot and you know provide for my family. Jenna Barrios is the owner of From Us to You. From mugs to candles to journals, um, so it's it's been a blessing, it's been a great journey. So when you buy something from a small business, you're supporting your local community. Um, the taxes that you know the community gets from that goes back into the community, um, and your support, you're helping support a family, like a tangible family that lives in your community, like your neighbor, it's insane. Owner of 1028, Natanya Tillman says, her business helps other businesses bridge gaps. The neat thing about our city club, though, is that we focus a lot on small business owners. So small business owners that are members of the club can choose to participate in our retail, in a retail experience. It allows them opportunities to get new clients, our customers, uh, to sell their products, make money, and push their customer base. Business owners say Augusta has been a great place to grow their business. In Augusta, Bria Smith, WJBF, News Channel 6. Now that Thanksgiving is over, you are probably busy getting your holiday shopping done, but you still have to watch out for those Grinches stealing your hard-earned money. Sean Lewis takes a look at what you need to know. It's no secret that this weekend is the big weekend. The National Retail Federation says more than 166 million Americans will shop this weekend alone, opening the door, unfortunately, to scams and bad businesses. So you have to do your due diligence. And Steve Burness runs Chicago's Better Business Bureau and sees buyers every day get taken in, especially with online shops, many of them with ads on social media. So you have to be careful. You have to do the research about them. You just don't do business with somebody that just shows up at your door either, the same thing you wouldn't do online. It goes without saying to do some research for both online stores and brick and mortar. When you're shopping, especially with small businesses, ask the important questions, like about returns and exchanges. I think consumers automatically think it's a right to take things back, you know, whatever time it may be. Refunds and exchanges is just a privilege, not a right. So you have to ask that question ahead of time. Another key piece of advice comes down to payment. Use a credit card, he says, whenever possible to protect yourself. Our sources say about $390 million has been uh, listed on our scam tracker of lost revenue so far from consumers. So a lot of times we're seeing what's out there is a lot of fake websites or websites that look too good to be true, and they usually are. As they say, buyer beware, both online and in person. Shop smart. Um, but also pay attention to uh, things around you because there's also these criminals that are out there who are trolling around, whether it be offline or online, trying to take advantage of the holiday spirit. Coming up, Chief Meteorologist Tim Miller is back with your Viper 6 forecast. And a rescue at sea takes place for a Carnival cruise guest. More on that when we return.
your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live 5 for 6. Well, here we are tonight on our Saturday night, and it is a cloudy night for sure. Terry Lambert, Hyundai Skyview Cam over at Bushfield showing cloudy skies. Not very windy now, but boy, that's going to be changing as the winds will start to pick up as we have a cold front that's headed our way, a system that's moving very rapidly towards us. So some rain, and I'm going to even say some thunderstorms tomorrow, so don't be surprised if you hear a rumble of thunder. You'll see a flash of lightning. Here's some thunder tomorrow morning as these storms roll on through. And then as soon as the storms are done, I'm thinking 11 o'clock, maybe by noon, we're into afternoon sunshine and warm temperatures tomorrow. Uh, and then a little cooler for Monday, then rain returns again by the time we get to Wednesday. So there goes high pressure storm system off towards our west, very rapidly headed our way. So it'll be a fast event for sure as we hit in the overnight hours. I'm thinking rain could start as early as 2, 3 o'clock tomorrow morning. So there's the system as it revs up and heads off towards the Ohio Valley and parts of the Midwest. Notice the clearing skies behind it already starting to see a little bit of occlusion here uh, with this storm system. So here is Futurecast. Starting now, roughly speaking, we have clouds and a little sprinkles off towards our west, but we'll start to get into a real decent band of showers and storms, and that'll move through, I would say, certainly from about 3 o'clock in the morning through at least 11. Notice there's the cold front, and right behind this front is the clearing sky. So, boom, sky's clear, and by Sunday night, we'll have just a few little clouds start to roll on in, but all in all, not bad, but we will be a little cooler by the time we get into Monday. But tomorrow, it's going to be breezy and warm, even after... Uh, the front moves on through. So there's Monday night again with clear skies, and we'll carry that into a little bit into Tuesday as well. So here is future cast already dealing with a little light showers now, but we'll increase these showers as we get into the wee hours of the morning. So two, three, four o'clock light showers. And then you'll notice here, here's five o'clock, a decent band of showers and some quick, heavy downpours. And I'm even going to tell you, I think a rumble of thunder in this, not looking for anything severe. Uh, as this system isn't going to it's going to missing some dynamic for severe weather here, which is good. Nobody's complaining about that. But there's seven o'clock. Notice there's eight, generally speaking, right through the central part of the CSRA, and then this moves off towards the east, towards our eastern viewing area and places such as Columbia and the Midlands. Notice we'll start to clear out by about nine ten o'clock on Sunday morning. All the rain activity moves towards the east, and then there's our clearing skies. I'll take it all the way through Sunday night. I mean, it's going to be lovely. So don't let tomorrow morning fool you as far as um, the whole day, because it will not be a washout. Uh, rain will only be about a quarter of an inch at best. Here we are with winds, though. Winds tomorrow are going to be an issue. If we're into Sunday morning through Sunday afternoon, notice we're going to get some gust up to about 40 miles per hour. There's Aiken about 40, and we'll continue sort of a breezy day as we get through uh, tomorrow. Rain totals, yeah, again, about a quarter of an inch. I don't really see much with this as this thing is moving very fast. 76 tomorrow, how about that? We'll flip those numbers for Monday, but still well above average of about 67. Cloudy with rain tonight. We'll be in the mid-50s. Rain will start really after midnight in some areas. Rain in the morning and then afternoon sunshine. Mid-70s will be our high temperature temperature for tomorrow, well above where we should be for this time of year. 10-day Viper Alert forecast, cooler on Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, we'll have some showers that are real cool down for Thursday and Friday. Stay with us for tomorrow morning. Sherry will have the very latest during Good Morning Augusta. Thank you, Tim. A miraculous rescue at sea after a guest on a Carnival cruise ship fell overboard. Deidre Bolton has more on that. The dramatic rescue captured on camera. The Coast Guard spotting the 28 year old cruise ship passenger with his head barely bobbing above the water. In the water. Frantically waving his arms, hoping to be spotted. To be out in the middle of the ocean, uh, treading water for upwards of 15 hours. It's simply incredible. The circumstances around the fall still unclear. The Carnival cruise ship Valor First alerting the Coast Guard of a possible man overboard around 2 p.m. Thursday after his sister alerted the ship that he did not return to his room the night before. We essentially came up with a search plan uh, to kind of systematically cover um, the ocean looking for, for the individual who we assumed had fallen overboard with no life jacket. Um, and no means of you know, keeping himself afloat other than treading water. He was eventually spotted by a bulk carrier approximately 20 miles south of Southwest Pass, Louisiana. He did show signs of you know, shock and fatigue and dehydration. Um, so they ended up meeting emergency medical services stateside 
uh, and where he was transported to a higher level of care. In a statement, Carnival says the ship retraced its route to support the search and provided support to the family members who were sailing with him and who remained on board. The ship was released by the Coast Guard and continued its journey to Cozumel. Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. After our break, we have the latest on the deadly shooting at a Virginia Walmart. But first, the winning numbers for tonight's South Carolina lottery are pick three, four, nine, eight, and the fireball is eight. And the pick four winning numbers, eight, six, three, six, the fireball is eight. The Palmetto Cash Five numbers, 10, 23, 26, 31, 35, and the power up is two. Now with the latest on the recent Walmart shootings in Chesapeake, Virginia. We have Elizabeth Schulze with more on that. Authorities say the Walmart supervisor who allegedly shot and killed six of his co-workers at a store in Chesapeake, Virginia, left a message on his phone titled Death Note, in which he complained about his colleagues and referred to murder. Witnesses tell ABC News the gunman, Andre Bing, appeared to be targeting specific employees. He knew when we were in the break room. It starts at 10 o'clock every night. The youngest victim, 16-year-old Fernando Chavez Barron, his family holding a memorial in his honor. Fernando is my friend, best friend, everything, like any other kid of a, uh, of a, in the community. On Monday, the entire Chesapeake community will hold a candlelight vigil to honor all the victims. Fernando, along with Lorenzo Gamble, Brian Pendleton, Kelly Pyle, Randall Blevins, and Tanika Johnson. There have been a series of recent deadly shootings across the country, including one at the University of Virginia and another inside a Colorado nightclub. On Thursday, President Biden reiterated his call for an assault weapons ban. The idea we still allow semi-automatic weapons to be purchased is sick. It's just sick. It has no, no social redeeming value. Zero, none. 
But investigators say the gunman in the Walmart shooting used a 9mm pistol he purchased legally just hours before the massacre. Police say they recovered the box and receipt for the weapon, along with ammunition from inside his home. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. A rail strike could become a reality this holiday season, affecting customers and likely stoking inflation. President Biden is now involved in the negotiations, trying to prevent that from happening. Four of the 12 unions have voted against a tentative deal. Congress can block a strike or order union members back to work once a strike begins. Unions and lobbyists for railroads will head to Capitol Hill when lawmakers return next week. The main sticking point is paid sick time. Rail workers could walk off the job as soon as December 9th. Coming up, rivalry week in college football as we look at Georgia Tech versus Georgia. And South Carolina shocks Clemson in Death Valley. Now, WJBF sports coverage you can count on. Clemson and South Carolina meeting for the 119th time on Saturday, a rivalry that dates back to 1896, but it's been all Tigers the last decade. Last win for the Gamecocks came in 2013, seven in a row for Clemson over USC. Not to mention that 40-game home winning streak, haven't lost at home since 2016 to Pitt, but Beamer Ball had the Gamecocks believing that they could do it. Second quarter, South Carolina down 14-0. Fourth and goal, Beamer goes for it. Spencer Rattler delivers. Finds Juice Wells in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Carolina down 14-7. Special teams were a problem for Clemson all day. Will Shipley fields a kick, a little trickeration. Uh, they huddle up, eventually ends up in the hands of Phil Maffa, but then it eventually gets fumbled and ends up in the hands uh, the Gamecocks, bizarre play, not sure they needed that. But ensuing drive for Carolina, second and goal from the four. Rattler was spinning it and running it. Powers through the goal line for the touchdown. Carolina down 16-14, third quarter. Down 30-21, second and seventh from the 28. Rattler rolls right, and guess who? Juice Wells again. Walks in for the score. USC down 30-28. They get a 35-yard go-ahead field goal from Mitch Jeter to take the lead in the fourth quarter. That's where we go, 31-30, Clemson down, first and 10 from their own 24. DJ Uyunglele did not have a great day, going deep, but picked off by Marcellus Dial. No return yards under the play, just over two minutes left. Same score, Clemson again, the special teams. Antonio Williams on the return, coughs it up, and Carolina would get the first down and 
hold on. They win 31 to 32nd straight win over a top 10 team. The group we had coming in here was very confident, and, and I told them after we stunk it up in Gainesville two weeks ago, I told them in the locker room after the game, like, you have a chance these next two weeks to completely change everything with this program, the entire trajectory of this program and the outside narrative. Um, and damn if they didn't. So, and the playoff hopes for two teams in consecutive weeks. First home loss for Clemson since 2016. First win for Carolina in the series since 2013. Contract talks on an extension coming up for Shane Beamer. You can imagine how those will probably go. How about some clean, old-fashioned hate? Georgia Tech and Georgia going at it in Athens. First quarter, Tyson Fumachan rushing to the right. Seven-yard touchdown. Georgia Tech out in front 7-3 to three after the first quarter. Second quarter, eight minutes left. But here come the dogs. Third and goal. Bennett hits Marcus Rosemi Jack Saint for the five yard score. And Georgia takes the lead right there, 10 7. Third quarter. Dogs up by six. Fourth and goal. Kirby Smart says, let's go for it. And Brock Bowers picks it off the turf. Kept it off the ground for the touchdown. Georgia cruising 20 to 6, up 30 to 7. Now Kendall Milton puts a ball on it. Georgia wins 37 to 14. Next up, LSU in Atlanta for the SEC Championship. In a game between the number two and three teams in the playoff rankings, Michigan wins big over Ohio State 45-23. Michigan heads to the Big Ten Championship, hoping for a second straight appearance in the college football playoff. High school football, Lincoln County made a goal line stand to get a 24-21 win over Dooley County. They're headed to the 1A semifinals. Swainsboro is as well in the other division. They beat Rabin County 35-10, and Thompson rolled past South Atlanta on the road. 56 38. Here are the matchups. All our teams on the road Thompson and Appling County, Lincoln County at Bowden, Swainsboro at Irwin County. And in private school sectors, a couple of teams playing for state championships Brentwood at Central Fellowship, December 2nd at 5 p.m. And Thomas Jefferson goes for their fourth straight state championship against Robert Toombs on December 1st at 5 p.m. Good luck to all of those teams. We will be right back.
Morning rain and a few thunderstorms for your Sunday morning. Then we're into sunshine, sort of windy tomorrow, 76 the high. We'll flip those numbers for Monday with sunshine 67. Then our next rain chance comes Wednesday, back to the 70s again. And then we're back into the 50s as cold front moves through. That's your forecast. In recent events, the San Antonio Public Library was surprised and relieved to find someone had returned their cassette tape of an interview with John Lennon and Paul McCartney into their Dropbox. It was checked out about 44 years ago when Lennon was still alive. That's our report for now. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to download our mobile app for breaking news and weather. Have a good night.